So with more than 20 carbines to choose from, which carbine would be considered nug when it comes to the cavalry during the American Civil War? That's what we're going to be talking about this week on the 11th OVC Cavalry Carbines. The American Civil War brought out both the old and the new. From the antiquated Hall carbines to the newest Spencers, this video is the first video in a multi-episode chapter of our channel that dives into the primary weapon of the U.S. Cavalry during the American Civil War, which was the carbine. So from a reenactor perspective, uh, purchasing your carbine is one of the most, if not the most expensive part of our hobby. So choosing the right one is critical. And of course, choosing the one that would be nug or normal, usual in general, depends solely on what unit and what year you are portraying. However, most of us don't have access to whatever we want from the National Archives, which is the ordinance returns that talk about uh, which weapons that each unit had during the quarters throughout the year and throughout the war. So what exactly would be nug from a general perspective when it comes to carbines used by the cavalry? So let's dive into the most common carbines used by the cavalry during the American Civil War. And again, we're talking about federal cavalry. Whether it was a Sharps carbine or the Smith carbine, we also have the Maynard, we have the Hall, we have the Cosmopolitan, the Pistol carbine, of course the Burnside, the Gallagher, the Muscatoon, the Merrill, the Wesson, the Ballard, the Sharps and Hankins, the Star Carbine, the Green, the Gibbs, of course the Joslin, the Lidner, the Spencer of course, and of course the Warren. So what exactly was the most common carbine used in the American Civil War by cavalry? Bar none, it was a Sharps carbine. When it comes to numbers, sustainability, and use in both Eastern and Western theaters of the war, the Sharps carbine stands head and shoulders above all of them. Here in this visual, you can see the progression of the eight most common carbines used by cavalry in the American Civil War. Keep in mind that these numbers aren't contracts or stores. These are numbers that come from the actual field, the ordnance returns uh, from each quarter of each year from each cavalry unit. So simply, if you want to be nug or normal, usual in general, through a general sense of the entire war, whether it's Eastern or Western theater, the Sharps carbine is the carbine to get uh, that would be able to sustain you through multiple impressions throughout both theaters of the war, through about, throughout most years of the war as well. One thing that's also interesting to note from these charts and the numbers that we're looking at is that other than the Sharps carbine, the next most common carbine in use throughout most of the war was the Burnside carbine. I find that interesting because it's hard to find reproductions anymore. They don't, as far as I know, they don't make any reproductions of the Burnside carbine, uh, which is interesting because it's a pretty interesting uh, and fun carbine to, uh, to access and to be able to, to handle and uh, definitely a unique weapon in his time. And like I said, other than the Sharps carbine, it was the second most common carbine used by the Federal Cavalry during the war. However, once the Spencer carbine took the field in mid to late 1863, it quickly surpassed that of the Burnside, of the Hall, of course, uh, of pretty much all other uh, carbines other than the Sharps. In fact, uh, toward the end of the war, when the war ended, it had caught up to just a, uh, within a few hundred arms of tying the dominant Sharps carbine. The next most common carbine was arguably the Smith carbine. While the Smith was the third most popular carbine early to mid-war as a whole, it is worth noting that the Western theater of the war tends to see more Smith, thus making it more nug for the Western theater, of course. Of course, many units in the Eastern theater had Smith carbines also, so it's not to discount that, but from my uh, preliminary research, it seems that there's a, a little bit more Smiths used during the Western theater versus the Eastern theater. The Smith carbine personally is one of my favorite carbines. It's light, it's easy to load, has a quick rate of fire, and most importantly, at least for me and my cat pouch is concerned, has a very short, very direct flash channel that tends to have a, a lower number of misfires as opposed to the uh, Sharps or other similar carbines. The only drawback, however, is that new users tend to find getting it open a bit difficult until they find just the right technique to open that lever on the breech of the, of the Smith. The rest of the carbines listed in this visual, like the Star, the Merrill, Pistol Carbine, and the Hall, are also important to note. However, obviously toward the end of the war, became less and less popular. 
Also, just for fun, I tracked the most common carbines used by each of the following states. Yes, I know these states sent uh, troops and regiments to both the western and eastern theaters of the war, but nonetheless, I find it interesting to look by carbine use by state. Here you can see that the U.S. regular cavalry pretty much kept the Sharps as their dominant carbine throughout the war. What is interesting is that some regular regiments had Spencers, but they actually reduced the number of Spencers by the end of the war rather than growing the number of Spencers in the regular cavalry. So here in looking at the state of Iowa, it is pretty obvious that as soon as the Spencers became available, they started replacing their Sharps with their Spencers in the upslope that you see here in this graph. The state of Illinois kept their Sharps as the primary carbine, but toward the end of the war, many Illinois regiments actually started picking up more Burnsides than Spencers. Of course, I find this interesting because as a whole, the, the army as a whole, started reducing the amount of Burnsides, increasing the amount of Spencers, and the state of Illinois actually did the opposite. Kansas pretty much kept the Sharps as their main weapon, with the Spencer filling in some of the attrition gaps late in the war, as you can see here. Lastly, Indiana has some interesting use of carbines through the war. Here you can see that this was one state that actually kept issuing the Burnside in growing numbers through the war. The Smith fell off in 1863 very quickly, being filled in with the Burnside and the Merrill, which is interesting. Of course, the Spencer trying to catch up later on in the war. So the whole point of this intro video is actually to show you that what was considered NUG, as far as which cavalry carbine was used, greatly depended on what year of the war, what unit you were portraying, and of course what theater of the war you were in. But if you were going to pick one carbine throughout the war that was the dominant carbine in both eastern and western theaters of war throughout the 1861 campaigns, through the 1865 campaigns, all the way through what unit you may have been, what unit you may have been in, get the Sharps carbine. Bar none stands head and shoulders above any other carbines, even toward the later part of the war with the Spencers catching up within a few hundred of the Sharps, the Sharps throughout the entire war dominated the numbers when it come to U.S. cavalry carbines used. So over the next few months, stay tuned to other videos we have coming on the in-depth aspect and the in-depth numbers and the functionality of each of these individual carbines used by the Federal Cavalry during the American Civil War. We appreciate you watching our channel. Please subscribe. Uh, apparently ring the bell off toward the right-hand side again. Please like us on Facebook. And most of all, when we see you on the field, ride hard. <laughs>